Welcome back, Sethling here. In front of me, I've got a huge 96 by 96 block contraption. And it looks kind of funny, but when I look at my map, it appears as pixel art of Mario. It looks a bit like this. It's easier to see on my display than it is on the video, I'm sure, but it looks like Mario. When I go ahead and push this button here, 600 pistons are going to fire, and there's going to be a lot of lag, but after a couple seconds, the pixel art now looks like this. Looks like the picture that Notch uses on his Twitter account. I can go ahead and push the button again here, and it's all going to do the lag thing again and update, and it'll look a bit like this, which is what, what it might look like if somebody implements Minecraft in Minecraft by using this technology. So I've got a 12 by 12 pixel display. I'll push the button one more time to get the last image that I have stored in memory. And what we can see now is a list of all the colors that are available in the color palette for this display. There are 10 colors, there's some red, blue, green, whatever. And so before I go on, I want to thank FV Disco for his help. He helped me test this stuff and figure out how to make it work. So I have, as I said, a 12 by 12 pixel display. Each pixel is eight blocks by eight blocks. And the way, the way it works is there are 16 by 16 chunks that most of you know about, and each chunk is divided into four eight by eight blocks. Each block corresponds to a single pixel on the map. And the way that the map determines the co what color a pixel should be is it looks at that eight by eight block and it figures out which type of block has the most presence in that eight by eight square. So in this case, we have six snow blocks, we have six stone blocks, six TNT blocks, six wool, six grass, six water. Uh, there's three leaves. And so everything is tied at six, except if we look down into this, through this glass, we see there's a stone block down there. And so there's actually seven stone blocks showing on the top layer of this eight by eight square. And so that's why in the bottom right corner, we see a bunch of dark gray pixels, which correspond to stone. So what we have down below, here's the, here's the stone block, block we were seeing through the glass. We have a little piston tape, and so when I push the button over there, every single piston tape in this 12 by 12 grid is going to cycle through and it'll go to the next block. In this case, the next block is snow, so we, when snow is pushed here, we're gonna, it's going to be visible through the glass and snow will be winning. And so when I go ahead, come over here and push the button, all those piston tapes are going to fire. And if I look at my map again, we see the bottom right corner. The bottom right corner has a pixel that, that's white now instead of the gray that it was before. I'll get out of the way and show you. And so this is a pretty cool technology that allows you to have 10 color displays and, and you, can, you can store any number of, of pixels in the loop and it'll display different images. But this isn't the only way to use this. You can also, I have a display over here. On the map, it shows up as a, as a brown, uh, a bunch of brown pixels with a green pixel in the middle, like this. And so what I have here is a, a little, bit, little bit of a different design. I still have the eight by eight pixel because it has to be eight by eight. Instead of t six of each block, I have five wood, five stone, five TNT, etc. Uh, five gra five leaves. And if I look down through the hole, there's another leaf block and that's why the pixel shows up as green on the map. But I also have a bunch of pistons, sticky pistons here, that are ready to push another block into, into this shaft uh, above where the leaves are to kind of block out the leaves and replace it with its own color. So if I push this ice block, for instance, I'll have six ice blocks and five of all the other kinds of blocks, which will cause the, the pixel to look like ice, which is a light blue color. So I have some levers over here, which are directly controlling the blocks over there. And so here's, here's the, the lever for wool. So if I look on my map, we can see that there's green in the middle right now because there's leaves showing. But if I flick the lever, now the wool shows up. And if I unflick it, the, the green will show up again. And if I flick the lever here, we have dirt. We have a dirt block here, you see it's orange. It's actually quite quick to update. There was a lot of lag over here because all the piston tapes were firing, but that's just lagged, that has to do with the piston tapes. That has nothing to do with the actual, the map display. And so we can get whites and all these other colors. So this, this, this design has 11 colors. It has leaves in addition to all the other ones. I couldn't use leaves here because leaves wouldn't work in the piston loop. 
Um, there are a couple of notes that I should make. The first is you might be wondering why I didn't just use colored wool blocks on top and I'd be able to get the 16 colors of wool plus all these other types. And the reason is that all, all of the different types of wool actually show up as that, light, that same light gray color uh, that we see uh, from, from this wool. It doesn't matter what color the wool is, it's going to show up the same on the map. Same is kind of true for, uh, for instance, sandstone and regular stone. Uh, if you if you have sandstone, if you look on the map, the sandstone is this dark gray color. There's a lot of block types that, that show up as the same color on a map, even though they look like a different color when you're looking at the actual block. The other thing I should note is that there's a limit to how far maps will update, and so that kind of affects the mechanics of your display. So if I push the button here, all the piston loops are going to cycle onto the notch picture, and it's kind of funny, we actually have some uh, some green on the notch picture where it was brown before because some of the grass spread from grass blocks to dirt blocks. But you'll notice the top few pixels in the notch picture haven't updated, and that's because I'm just too far away and the map doesn't check that far away. So if I move a little bit closer, it's going to update those pixels and we'll get the whole image. But it's kind of a limitation on the size of a display and where the player has to be positioned relative to the display. And you also have this, this indicator, which if you're, if you're directly over the display, is going to block parts of it, which is a little bit annoying. But it's, that's the way it works. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing what people are going to be able to come up with with this type of display. Uh, there is one more thing I want to note. There are actually more shades of these colors that you can get it, technically in maps. If you look in the ocean here, for example, you'll see there's a few different shades of blue. And the way that that occurs is that there, if you have blocks next to each other at different altitudes, it causes different different shades of that color to show up. It's called beveling, and and so theoretically you could get different colors to show up, but it's a little bit difficult because you have to control the altitude of blocks, which is hard to do in a static structure like this. But yeah, if you if you come up with something, post it as a video response to this. I've posted the schematic for this pixel in the video description so you can download that schematic and try it out for yourself. Thanks for watching.